Blessings and welcome forward once again to Reasonings Right Here at the Tree of Life. I'm Jerome Sage Butler. I want to give thanks to Raman, Bob, and for Isa Char as well, too. Yeah. Ah, this next topic is very, I would say, it's a very popular topic nowadays. And I think about a year ago, there was this incident. I think, was it in a, in a, a corridor? In, in, is it, was it a train station where I think a black girl accosted a white um, male for wearing dreadlocks and saying, that's not your culture. Why are you, why are you pirating black culture? And it sent ripples across the internet, right? I watched a couple of videos, people talking good, bad, and arguing, and some saying good things. I think I watched this one that brought a good perspective. So I said, let me do one from my own understanding, informed by some of my research. All right, I have locks. What do I refer to my, to my locks as? You know, interestingly, I refer to my locks as my hair. Do you know that? <gasps> wow. Yes. I'm not in this dreadlocks philosophy. I'm sorry. Sorry to offend people who are deep into dreadlocks philosophy. I am not. This is my hair. Now, I'm going to say it again, because it might sound a little condescending, sound a little like I'm warped or going off a little. This is my hair. See? My H A I R. That's the word used to represent what this is, right? This is my hair. There are lots of philosophies around locks, dreadlocks. Rastafari has a strong religious perception around locks as, as a representation of your natural self, one that is not skewered by Babylon or the Eurocentric influence upon African peoples in the West. Hence, I think that's where the young lady was coming from when she was saying that locks is black people's traditions, right? There are another set of people who say um, black people's hair mat naturally. Their reference is going back to Guantanamo Buddha with matted hair, where it says that matted hair doesn't make it a master, right? So the matted hair, the locks, it's been a way we have worn our hair time immemorial. So what angle is Jerome Sage but are looking at locks? Am I promoting myself? Well, you're watching Sila Media, and this is Jerome Sage Butler. Pardon me if I seem to be promoting myself. Please like and subscribe on Sila Media, you know what I mean? To keep up with the information, right? I'm approaching Lux from the point of view that it is actually God-given. It's our hair. It's indigenous. When we were more naturally into the natural environment before we built the built environment, right? I.e. civilization, right? Locks represented more than just a fashion statement. <gasps> yeah, for real. It was more of a survival mode. It was so then the grand master, the great master, would have the, matted, the most matted hair. It would be the longest, thickly matted, and as they said, it was a shield from predators, wild animals, because <laughs> I don't know if you have dreadlocks or if you wear your hair like this, but I do, right? Animals tend to be very afraid, if you, especially if you approach them at night. I suppose you have it up in our local style. And you come and say, hey! You know, somebody goes, I'm not cool to animals. Don't get it twisted, okay? I'm not, I'm not cool to okay? I'm just saying. They tend to be very scared. But remember, some dreadlocks have matted here, you know, like really matted here, like, you know, really matted here. So, like, you can see, like, you know, I used to say, you know, Bushman, ah, you know, Black Art Man, who oh, coming to get you, right? Because the indigenous man with his locks was very dreadful and terrible. That's why the word dread and terror comes, especially in Rastafari, when the Holy Light started to lock their hair, right? That's in like the 30s, right? Because they were, they were original Holy Lights and they followed Garvey, they were Garveyites, right? So they started matting their ears and then they became, matting their hair and then they became Rastafari, right? So the Bata we need to appear, high priest, a most ancient priests, you know, through the Aksumite Empire, they've got matted here. And, you know, the ancient Dravidians in India, they also got matted here, right? The Sardus got matted here. And every indigenous nation from Syria right across to even old Europe have individuals with matted here. The indigenous man's matted here, like I said, it was more of a protection, wasn't a fashion statement, wasn't just a statement of naturality of, or religiosity or a reclamation of ancience. Right? It was more a symbol of just his life, right? It was just her life, her, her hair is, how oh, she wore her hair as protection from the elements, how oh, she was in tune with the cosmic, how oh, she was in tune with nature, and how oh, the nature of her hair kept her connected to the Most High. 
right? So I'm approaching here from that standpoint because when I first wanted to lock, my head, want, my hair wanted to be like this. Though I, I had people telling me, well, you know, you you need to survive. You know, you're in university. Maybe you need to think about getting a job. You can get it if your locks is neat and all this stuff, right? So I had some issues with my hair at first, right? But eventually I settled it in as I settled into the understanding of myself, right? So then I begin to understand how it is that I am expressed through my hair. So then I realize it is an extension of my being, but it isn't the complete nature of my being, right? So I'm not bashing people wear locks currently for fashion statements, right? Because who am I? Am I a judge or something? I wear my hair because it is my natural, you know, place and position in nature to be like this, right? And as I grow older, my hair is, all of it is becoming like that one I showed you because I'm free past psychologies of hair and why you wear your hair. So I think the judgmental nature of people who are still looking at people with matted hair has some kind of a, you know, abhorrence to their connection is, is out of line. And I think it's time we get past these things because I think for real, we are overboard on that one. And my culture still has people who are judging you, though they have it in the textbooks that all of us are equal and you shouldn't discriminate. But locks is heavily regarded as a Rastafarian tradition in Jamaica. And so it is because Rastafari have popularized locks in Jamaica. And some Rastas are offended that you have a, a class of maybe even, you know, Eurocentric Christians who are wearing locks. Because I know some people when they watch my channel, you know, some Rastas, they, they don't like the Christian mindedness. And some Rastas, they love it, right? And some Christian people, they don't love it because it's too Rasta. But remember, no, please don't know. This is my experience. Get with it or, you know, get with your own. I don't know. So, you know, locks is basically for anyone that chooses to wear locks, wear their hair like this, right? Now, if you have a spiritual attachment, and you're going to either, you know, wrap up your hair, maybe a bubble, maybe a, you know, a bingi, you know, maybe you're a Muslim, you know, maybe, maybe whatever the reason why you cover your hair, you know what I mean? You have people who, 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 who ascribe to, they are asked about them, have a Muslim. You know, symbology and symbolism and, and vice versa. You have Muslims who have a lot of Rastafarian symbolism too and Jews with Rastafarian symbolism, some Jews with locks too. So I mean, you've seen that the locks phenomenon is expanding. It's like we're going back to indigenous man. It's like we're going back to indigenous woman, indigenous self, that we can be like this. And my final point, not final, because there's no final. My next point I want to bring up, and I, I remember I'm, I'm trying to connect with my ancestors and the spirit as we're talking, right? And they're saying to me, because they want this point to be known, so I'm just going to be very patient in how I articulate it. They're saying to me to say to people who are like possibly judging people, they're saying, notice what I said about how, how my friends wanted me to grow my locks neat. The Spirit is saying to me, especially in the modern society, that there are, there are these fashion houses, what do you call them, salons, right? That are neatly twining people's hair and telling them that is how they lock their hair. The Spirit is saying to cut that out, seriously cut that out. I'm not telling you don't be a beautician's dream. Stop telling people that's how to lock their hair. Please. Don't insult nature, okay? There are people who naturally are matting their hair as God allowed, or, or as God is allowing them or how they're desiring it. And it's, it's chunky. It's fat. Stop judging those people. Stop with your judgmental attitudes towards those people. Those people are some of the most brilliant minds. And their antennas, this natural communication tool with the cosmic that's picking up the vibratory signals of the ether, they're very aligned with it. That is why they got their hair up in all these nice fashion. This is why the spirit wants the hair to mat. It creates a stronger magnetism. See, I got to it because they told me to be patient. So ancient man had a stronger magnetism because his hair was matted. Ancient woman's hair was matted all the way, it grew, it pulled the cosmic in, it attracted more knowledge, more energy, more awareness. Stop judging those brothers and those sisters with their humongous locks. Stop judging them, please. Hallelujah, the soul is asking, cut it out. If they're popping up in your churches, understand them. Are they just going to move on? God will not forsake them because you can't 
have it in your mentality to see them as they are. But God is going to continue to speak to their heart and they're, continue, they're going to continue to grow their hair like that. They're going to continue to mat it that way. Accept it. Accept yourself. There are a lot of people who they talk about they're so aware of who they are and they cut their precepts daily. They cut their hair. You can search your scriptures. You can say, oh, remember where I started? No, I reached the Nazarene vow. I take my time. I'm not trying to do this to make money or try to be popular. I'm trying to relate a message. The Nazarene vow recounts what? No raise up on your head, up on your beard. Wasn't it seemed to be, sorry, pardon me, wasn't it said to be a most divine connection between man and his creator? Wasn't it said to be a clear differential between male and female? Wasn't it a clearly defined order? Some says it's for a while. Who am I to say otherwise? Some says Nazarene vow is cycles and you go there maybe seven years, 21 years, whatever it is. Some say there are Nazarenes who do not have matted hair. That is true, but it doesn't grow, right? So, there are many ways to look at the Nazarene vow. The essence of matted hair are dreadlocks, you know, is, is heavily presented to us as a postmodern attempt to recapture some antiquity and hence the more cultural and fervent Rasta take offense to seeing certain groups of people parade with locks, right? And sometimes you have some people who think fashion, it's like a fashion statement, like those who are, you know, twisting here and talking about they're locking it. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you know? So we understand. But please remember the essence, because those same people who are doing that, it's unhealthy for the hair root and for the true hair follicle. You're damaging the hair by what you're doing. You know you're damaging the hair. And for, sorry, for some who don't know, you are damaging the hair by doing that. I hear people tell me all the way, oh, your hair is so beautiful, it's so healthy, what do you do? Can I tell you? I think I should tell you, but I'll tell you in my testimony, right? Because I'm going to do the testimony, or the, the, the second half of my testimony today, right? So I'll tell you how it is that my hair looks so, as people say, so beautiful, and why it is that the old one looks this way. I'll tell you, all right? So there, there's a reason for everything. So to have healthy hair and to be yourself, just be true. Just be true to who you are. Your hair knows how it wants to be. Some people, their hair will never mat, and it will never grow past their shoulders. Some people, it will always mat into thick, congealed bunch, or one, because what? It's the frequency they're on, it's the energy. Just like the First Nations, or the ancient peoples. So honor your dreadlock, honor your hair traditions, love your hair for what it is, and don't judge the other nations, you know, they, you know because it's, it's in all traditions, so let us be real, you know what I mean? But love your locks, you know. Love your traditions because of dreadlocks. You know, love Rastafari. And if this is how you have come to matted hair, just love it. But remember Buddha had matted hair. Just remember that there is a history, a culture, an ancient or an ancient surrounding matted hair or locks here. Rastafari, Yahshua, Divine Christ, our ancestors be praised, be loved. Thank you all, brilliant, locked, dreadlocked, indigenous looking man and woman. You're all awesome beauties, sparks of divine light, divine life. Continue to be your awesome natural appearance, your natural self. Transitioning from all those synthetic, biosynthetic, or artificial now to the organic, original man and woman. Blessings.